About a year ago, I decided to go on a bit of a nostalgia trip and decided to play a bunch of games I played as a kid. I might talk about that in more detail in a future video, but I want to talk about a specific game in this video. SSX Tricky. This was the first game I decided to play for my non-existent list of childhood games I want to play again. Up until recently, I had only played one other game from the series, and I guess SSX games used to be pretty popular. I always felt like I existed in a bubble when I played these games, probably because I didn't know anyone personally who also liked the games, but as it turns out, I wasn't the only one who liked SSX. Since I had so much fun playing SSX Tricky, I thought I should give the other games in the series a go too. I didn't play every SSX game available, I skipped the original SSX because I wanted to, and I skipped SSX Blur because it's a Wii game with motion controls, and I'm not about that life. I probably said the same exact thing about Skate It, but it still holds true. Apparently there were some old mobile games and an ancient plug and play type of game. You remember those? I think they were popular. Unfortunately, we're gonna ignore that nonsense. I'll be talking about SSX Tricky, 3, On Tour, and the one released in 2012. On a side note, I streamed all of these games over on Twitch, so you could have watched these and listened to me give my opinion in real time if you knew about it. Follow me at twitch.tv slash rboots. I don't exactly have a schedule, but I try to stream two to three times a week, so stop by and hang out. Back to the topic at hand, I played these games a little out of order, but I will still be talking about each one in order of release so we can see the evolution of the games. With the exception of SSX 2012, these were all the GameCube versions played on an emulator. Please don't report me, I had to do it this way, I promise. Okay, let's start with the first game already. SSX Tricky, it has a great soundtrack. Run DMC wrote their hit song, It's Tricky, specifically for this game. Technically, there is other music in this game, but it definitely takes a back seat compared to Run DMC. The gameplay mechanics are actually pretty good. Occasionally, it might feel a little finicky, like when you try to turn down a path that you already passed and the boost isn't good enough to get you back up the hill. And I know I'm not supposed to be snowboarding up the hill, I know how gravity works, but sometimes it just feels a little wrong. The air tricks feel good. You can do grabs using combinations of the triggers and Z, and also tweak them, which you will pretty much do all the time. The grinding mechanics are decent, although they don't always seem to work as intended. Sometimes you get moving way too fast and it just launches you off the rail. I don't know if this is intentional, or if the developers just didn't expect you to reach the sound barrier while boosting on a rail. We can't forget the biggest selling point in the game though, the uber tricks. It's like performing special tricks in Tony Hawk games. There's nothing like the feeling when you finally fill your special meter, and you go off a jump to pull off your character's signature move, and you realize that you needed three times more airtime. Then, you just have to watch your character stylistically trick to their inevitable demise. But that arguably makes it even more satisfying when you do finally land it. It's really fun to see all the different tricks though. Each character has one unique signature trick, as well as a few other tricks that are shared between characters. There's even a different set of tricks for each board type. The three types to choose from are Freestyle, BX, and Alpine. They're supposed to give slight boosts to certain stats, Freestyle will boost your tricks, BX will boost whatever it feels like, and Alpine will boost your anger stat because it sucks and I hate using it. I mean, I think it's used for racing. Back to the tricks though, you could tell the animators really had their fun with these tricks. Removing their feet from the bindings, defying the laws of physics, sawing the board through their body. I mean, come on, what is this? Don't you think this is a little graphic for an E-rated game? There are two main game modes, trick events and race events. There are time trials too, but I always preferred the actual races over those. They're pretty self-explanatory. The trick events bring in additional ramps and rails, although I don't know how beneficial they actually are to generating more points. I'll be honest, I never really paid any attention to how many points certain tricks awarded, 
or if you could even get combo multipliers from grinding. I mainly just pressed buttons that did tricks, and it seemed to work most of the time. I always treated rails in this game as a means to get to a specific place rather than for points. As the levels get more difficult to land tricks, the medals require more points to obtain them. It maybe needed a little more balancing though. You can obtain a gold medal in Garibaldi in 2-3 to three big jumps, whereas Alaska could come down to the last couple of jumps before finally getting the gold medal. So in terms of balancing, it seems a little better towards the end of the trick events. Let's switch over to the race events now. You may think it's a straightforward point-to-point -point race against other races, but it throws some twists into the mix. First off, you can punch people. I don't know what's more satisfying, landing an uber trick after many failed attempts, or having no boost and absolutely destroying another racer as they pass you and instantly filling your boost meter. Unfortunately, there are repercussions for being a bully. As it turns out, repeatedly knocking someone over during a race turns them into an enemy, which causes them to be more aggressive towards you. What goes around comes around, and eventually the puncher will become the punchee. I do find it pretty funny when I play as the most peace and love zen character and I just get done pummeling everyone on the hill and his response to someone getting mad at him is When push comes to shove, I just love. Right, love. It's probably just a cultural difference. Some people shake hands, some people kiss each other on the cheek, and you greet them with a backhand to the face. Of course, if you're looking for a more passive approach to winning races, there are also shortcuts. Some of them are significantly better than others. Most of them are marked with red or blue glass, but some of them you just have to find for yourself. It's pretty cool to find alternate routes that sometimes put you on a completely different track. Or when it puts you on a difficult path and it basically becomes a platformer game. It isn't always beneficial, but it isn't about the destination though. It's about the journey. Even if the destination involves falling off a skyscraper and being reset to last place, I guess that means I didn't do it correctly, but some of these shortcuts are unnecessarily difficult. Also, it can get a little annoying when the game can't figure out if you're in first place or last place, then the game just keeps playing the sound effect when you reach first place over and over. I feel like this game has a good balance between linear hills and alternate paths and shortcuts. It doesn't feel like you're stuck on a single track, but it's not so spread out that you rarely interact with other racers. You can't beat people up if you don't see them, right? The level difficulty progression is pretty even too. I wouldn't say there's any specific level that is much more difficult than the last one. This game also features the one and only Razel. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Razel. On a slim chance you don't know who that is, he is a famous beatboxer. You remember when beatboxing was popular? I don't. It also doesn't really sound very good the way it was recorded. I don't even think beatboxing sounds good unless you're listening to it live while blowing out the speakers, or if you're redlining your audio recording. And if you're redlining your audio recording, you're probably doing something wrong. And I hate to tell you this, but I think the thing you're doing wrong is beatboxing. I would apologize for saying that, but I think you deserve it after all the insults you said about my snowboarding. I guess I could mute Razel, and then I wouldn't have to talk about him, but whatever. To crudely wrap this up for SSX Tricky, it's a good game. One more comment I'll make, which is going to be consistent for all the games, the character progression is the same for every character. Once you get gold medals on all of the levels and trick events and races, your stats will be maxed out. You can play as other characters, but let's be honest, they're all the same. Other than some characters preferring the Alpine board, which you might be stuck with if you ever want to perform their signature trick, Everyone plays the same. They might have slightly different maximum stats, but it's negligible. I don't know if I would necessarily call this a bad thing. I guess it adds more replayability without having to fully start a new game save. I'm sure as a kid with much more free time on my hands, I like this a lot more. But now, I'm pretty much done with the game at that point. Let's jump forward two years into the future for the next iteration, SSX3. I never played this game as a kid, so this is also my first impression of it. And my first impression of the game? It's pretty good too. It feels almost identical to SSX Tricky, 
so it's pretty easy to pick up and get used to. One new mechanic that was added was tail presses and nose presses. I have mixed feelings about these. On one hand, they're nice because they allow you to increase your combo and point multiplier, but on the other hand, they make me feel like I have to hold the controller like a Neanderthal. The game has it in mind that you're always using this in between air and rail tricks, but you can't exactly press the A button with your thumb if you're already using it to hold the analog stick. So I tend to find myself using my pointer finger to hold the analog stick while my thumb is on the A button, or maybe it's the other way around. As unnatural as it feels, it's kind of become second nature at this point, and I don't even know what I'm doing. Before anyone tells me that there's a short period of time before losing your combo and releasing the analog stick, I know, but I also have to charge up my spins and flips, and it doesn't feel like I have enough time to do that. Then, I also sometimes have to steer while I'm charging up my spins, and I end up doing the same thing with my left hand. The point is, I'm probably bad at this game, and instead of correctly utilizing the mechanics as they're intended, I play this game like a Neanderthal. They also did away with the convenient level selector and switched to a world map. I don't think I like this. It's kind of nice to be able to just casually ride down the mountain. They also put a bunch of collectibles on the mountain to help you earn some extra money. These can be pretty annoying though. If you go off a jump and miss the collectible, there's no convenient way to try again. You have to go back to the top of the hill or the nearest fast travel location. I guess it can be used for world building by showing where each track is located related to each other. Not me though. All I ever did was choose the event I want to join, then it teleports me 50 feet up the hill just so I can ride into the start area. Just put me in the event. I don't need the theatrics of it all. The introduction of the open world just seems like a waste of time to me. Like how it requires you to go to base stations in order to spend your money on stat upgrades and accessories. I do kind of like the cosmetics in the game though. It's more than just a few outfits to select from. You can customize each article of clothing, change your board, and even add some special effects if you have a bunch of spare money laying around at the end of the game. Different boards don't have different stats anymore, so you can choose whatever you think looks the best. Or worst, whatever look you're going for. I do like that you were able to customize your uber tricks. Even though I only did that once or twice, I still like the option to do so. It does let you equip signature tricks from other characters, which I feel like kind of defeats the purpose of playing as a specific person, but I guess it's okay because they're pretty expensive. I don't know if I fully agree with player stats being something you have to spend money on though. It requires you to make some pretty difficult decisions throughout the game. Like, do I want to buy this cute hairstyle or hat and this pink board that matches the rest of my outfit? Or do I want to spend my money on something that will actually make me better at snowboarding? Of course, the correct answer is the former, but how else am I supposed to upgrade my stats? It just seems more fitting that you get stat points to spend after earning medals and events like an SSX Tricky. Alright, I'll stop nitpicking the boring stuff about the game now. Let's get back to the gameplay. I mentioned earlier that it still feels a lot like SSX Tricky, which is true, but some of the rules have changed. Once you fill your boost meter for the first time, you don't get access to the uber tricks right away. First, there are some slightly higher difficulty grabs to perform. Once you land four of those, then you can do your actual uber tricks. Similar to SSX Tricky, after landing five of them, you get unlimited boost. Unfortunately, you don't get unlimited boost for the rest of the slope. It only lasts for a minute before you have to land your five uber tricks again. As disappointing as this is, it does make sense from a balancing standpoint. In SSX Tricky, you could get a quick sucker punch at the start of the race, and if you get some lucky jumps after that, you can just hold down boost for the entirety of the race. It isn't a guaranteed gold medal, but it does definitely help. They added the ability to perform uber tricks while on rails, which is a neat addition. Thankfully, you can still punch people during the races too. I wish I would have known about that sooner rather than later though. But I think that was the only reason I was able to finally beat Simon in our 1v1 race. Speaking of which, I haven't really talked about the story slash progression yet. There are three different peaks, and on each one there are two to three race and freestyle events. Then there is a 1v1 event against that peak's rival. Then one additional race and freestyle event that takes you down the entire mountain. I guess I shouldn't leave out the free ride locations too, 
They're basically there just so you can pick up collectibles. If you're into that kind of thing, maybe you will enjoy it. I tended to ignore them unless they were in my path. On a final note, I gotta talk about the soundtrack. And you jerk it out. Wow, what a disappointment. It's not even that I didn't like any of the songs. I like a handful of them. But what were they thinking when they implemented them into the game? You know how most games will play music in the background and the songs just play? Well, I guess that was far too boring for this game. They tried to make the songs sound as if they were part of the world and part of the gameplay. Sometimes you just hear the basic beat, sometimes it's the instruments, sometimes, what seems like very rarely, it actually plays the full song. Maybe I'm old fashioned, but I just want to listen to the song. Don't try to remix it on the fly. It doesn't sound good. The few times they played a song I liked, it was ruined by removing 50% of the instrument tracks. My biggest complaint about the music is the playlist customization. It's fine if you want to listen to all the music, but the moment you want to remove a song or two, it becomes a big deal. I don't want to give you the wrong idea, there is a playlist editor. But you can't just simply customize it. No, you have to pay money to add songs to a playlist. The first five are free, but any more than that and you gotta start paying to add songs. I mean, come on. I can only listen to the same five songs for so long. You think I won't notice just because you try to remix the songs? I see through your tricks. You're not fooling me. Overall, SSX3, pretty good game. Let's slow down for a brief intermission. I've been having a lot of fun playing these SSX games again, and for the first time. Since I played these out of order, On Tour was the last one I was going to play in the series. Up until this point, I had played them for a little more than 20 hours total. That was over the course of about two months. I was potentially a little worn out by this time, but I was on a roll and I wanted to finish the series. So that moves us into the next SSX game, SSX On Tour. I think I've stalled enough before saying this, and I won't beat around the bush. I didn't like this game. I'll try not to sound too negative, but I'll definitely be the most harsh on this game. If you really like this game, then I'm sorry that you like a bad video game. If this was a standalone game with no context of the rest of the series, it would probably be just fine. But being a sequel to other SSX games, it's kind of a disappointment. They changed too much and none of it seemed to be for the better. The art style for the menus looked gross. I don't know why they thought middle school kid notebook art was a good idea. Maybe they just thought it was easier to outsource the UI design to their kids. I'm getting a little suspicious that this game was created using child labor. They added a character creator, which I have mixed feelings about. On one hand, I like character creators. I think they're pretty neat. On the other hand, let me play as the OGs. These games are built using characters who we've grown attached to. And now we have to play as some generic character? What about Zoe, Simon, Elise, the other ones? I'm not going to list them all. Oh, that's right. You only get to compete against them sometimes. They really only show up in a handful of events. Most of the time, you're just competing against other generic characters. Instead of hunting down and beating up Luther because he said something that sounded like it could have been an insult, you only get to beat up Bob, Derek, T-Bird, Seanba. Who are these people? As far as I'm aware, the only way you're able to play as the usual characters is in quick play. You can't actually progress through the game with them. They ruined the controls too. They took a perfectly reasonable control scheme from SSX3 and thought it would be hilarious if they swapped one of the trick buttons with the reset button. They made uber tricks always be in slow motion with a different camera angle. They added casual skiers and snowboarders all over the mountain. Although, it is fun to beat them up and take the lunch money. So, I guess I can stop being mean now. I should probably be more positive and talk about the good stuff and the things I liked about this game. This game suck. All right, we got one more game to round off the series. Last, but certainly not least, we have SSX. 
This game must have come out around the time when it was becoming popular to name new games in a series the same as the original games. It doesn't really make sense in this situation though, because it's not like this was supposed to be a reboot, it's just a sequel. Then again, numbers don't seem to be their strong suit. The only game with a number in the title is SSX3. This might sound a little hypocritical considering my opinion on On Tour, but they added a bunch of new mechanics and changed the controls around, and I like it. It actually feels like the controls are modernized and not just arbitrarily changed though. I never really had an issue with the button controls, but I think after playing the skate games for so many years, I've just gotten used to the flick controls with the analog stick. The new mechanics they added are a little bit of a mixed bag. Some are definitely better than others, but I'll get into that later. The story behind this game is that Zoe Payne is trying to get the band back together so that they can get themselves killed on dangerous mountains. The main game all leads up to the nine deadly descents. Each one utilizes a different mechanic to help make it down each deadly descent. It could be wearing armor to help when running into obstacles, using ice picks to help when turning on ice, wearing a headlamp to see in the dark, or the objectively best mechanic, using a wingsuit to avoid falling off the mountain. There's a few more, but nothing really needs to be said beyond the wingsuit mechanic. The main story is a good length, and there are still a lot of levels beyond that as well. One of the issues I had with SSX3 was that tracks frequently overlap, so there was a lot of time spent on the same hill. It still happens in this game, but not as frequently, and there are way more mountains, so it's not much of a concern. There's a good difficulty range, although I ran into it a few times where it felt like the gold medal requirements seemed a little bit ridiculous. Or maybe I just need to get good. One thing that makes SSX 2012 feel so different from the other games is its sense of scale. I don't know if it comes off the same visually as it does when actually playing it, but everything in this game just feels multiplied. Bigger mountains and jumps, higher speeds, flips and spins are much faster, higher stakes in some instances, you can actually die in a bunch of the levels, or at least get a game over state. Even the camera is zoomed out more, making the player seem smaller compared to everything else. Surprisingly, this game feels the most arcade-like. Given all of these factors and the fact that the tricks are much more forgiving, the game really encourages you to hit a bunch of buttons or wiggle your analog sticks every time you go off a jump. Now, I won't pretend that the previous games didn't do this as well to an extent, but you really had to be intentional with the tricks in the past. Tricks took time to perform, and if you miscalculated your airtime, you're going to end up with some snow up your nose and down your coat. This game, not so much. If you realize you're going to hit the ground soon, all you have to do is let go of the trick, and you'll probably put the board back on your feet in time to land. I'm sure the animations for the uber tricks are really cool, but I wouldn't know. Everything just turns into a tornado of spinning body parts and boards, because that's how they want you to perform tricks. None of this is objectively bad, but it's worth mentioning because it really makes this game feel different from the other ones, and in some instances has a lot more going on visually. All that being said, there's a wide variety of play styles, and there is always something different to switch to if you're getting sick of one type of event. There are the usual trick events and time trials, I think there are technically a few races in the story mode, but even those still feel like time trials. The unique playstyles really show up with the new mechanics, specifically the survive it game modes. Certain slopes throw some kind of obstacle on the hill, and you need to see how many times you can make it down without dying. You get three rewinds, and I must say, the rewind mechanic is pretty good. I've played enough Forza Horizon to know rewind mechanics aren't always very good. I should probably talk about the online features of this game, even if it's not something you care about. I can't say it means a whole lot to me either, but it's there, and as far as I know, there's no way to turn it off. One feature that I think is kind of neat is the geotag mechanic. You can place geotags anywhere in the world, and depending on how long it takes to get picked up or if they expire, you get different amounts of XP or money. If you play the game today, there's a high probability that they will time out, unless the other person playing somehow finds it at the bottom of a ravine in a dark cave. I would assume that there is also a reward for the other person who picks it up, 
but I honestly haven't ever paid enough attention to see what those rewards actually are. The other main online feature is probably leaderboards. So every time you finish a run, you'll sit at the end screen for 30 seconds, then it will tell you the upload failed because the servers aren't available. That's about the extent of my online experience in this game. It isn't that big of a deal, but just in case you decide to play this game, I just want to let you know that these are things you will have to deal with. With all the pros and cons and big differences from the previous games, I would honestly recommend this game. The soundtrack is pretty good too. There are a few songs I don't really like, but not enough to bring down my opinion on the soundtrack as a whole. You're probably wondering, what order would I rate these games in? And I'm not going to do that. All three of the three games I played are good, and I like them for different reasons. SSX Tricky is probably the most challenging but most satisfying to land tricks and knock over other racers. SSX 3 is just a good progression from Tricky in terms of the core gameplay mechanics. It's a little more forgiving and adds some nice extra features to the tricks. SSX 2012 has a good variety of different gameplay mechanics and difficulty levels. Overall, it's a pretty good franchise, and I'm a little surprised that over the course of all the games, they stayed pretty good. I know it sounded like I hated SSX on tour, and maybe I did, but I'm not trying to tell you that I think it's objectively a bad game. I just didn't like it. This video is basically a year in the making now, and I certainly don't need more footage of these games, but I'll probably still return to these games every once in a while. I think they still hold up 10 to 20 years later. There is supposedly another skate game in the making, and after making my video on that series, I never expected that to happen, so who knows? Maybe another SSX game? Somebody? I don't know who would make it without it being ruined. EA? Don't ruin Skate. I don't trust you with your free-to-play approach to Skate 4, but I'll probably still play it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Maybe you can argue about what your favorite SSX game is in the comments. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss my next video in three more years.